Regarding the marriage of the corporate with the not-for-profit, um, this is a really important aspect. A lot of people talk about alternative economic systems, circular economic systems, um, resource-based economic systems, but entire nations get destroyed when they try and go out of the central banking system. So expecting the governments or corporations that put us into this mess to get us out is, um, I believe, an exercise in futility. So what we need to do is incorporate the commercial interest with the not-for-profit, the not-for-profit at the top of the pyramid. Imagine a pyramid, if you will. At the top is your foundation, your not-for-profit. Below that, or in one corner, you have an incorporated body where all your foundation-owned business interests will be placed. They'll be incorporated. Um, these will serve to provide jobs for people, to provide um, real-world training opportunities for the marginalized people, and at the same time, they will generate income for the foundation. Now, the corporations pay taxes in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, so um, it's probably a good idea to keep your records public, indicate to the world that you are paying your fair share in taxes, despite the fact that it's a foundation-owned interest, but at the same time, generating sufficient income to ensure the economic sustainability of the foundation itself. That money can then be invested. The proceeds from the corporate and commercial ventures can be invested into hedge fund accounts. So let's say you build a construction company first so you can build everything. The foundation owns your construction company and from there you build a school, just for example, right? Okay, at such a time as your commercial interests expand, as your commercial interests expand, you'll have more money to work with. Assuming a system that's already fully established, um, you have your pyramid, going back to your pyramid. You have the foundation at the top, you have the incorporated body on one bottom corner, and you have a private investment account on the other corner. So your foundation builds a school. Let's say you have a school for 300 people, you calculate the complete and total cost of the school for a year. You establish an account in your private investment, hedge fund, whatever. Um, we have access to secured interest accounts um, if and when we reach that level. That's a different story. But let's just say you're using a private hedge fund. It's easy to establish an account that will fully fund the school for a year. So you determine how much the school needs for operational expenses. You establish the hedge fund account to pay for the school. That way, you've got 300 people going to their school. None of them have to pay any money out of pocket. All your teachers are paid for. All your school supplies are paid for. And the new proceeds from the commercial investment can be set aside, um, reinvested, set aside for um, new projects. So maybe it's corporate expansion. Maybe your local area is lacking commercial interest in some area or another. So you establish new commercial ventures. You're now generating more, bench, more venture capital, more um, investment capital for the foundation, which you invest in additional accounts. Um, as you progress, you can build your hospitals. And now how much is it going to cost the op hospital to operate at full capacity for the entire year? There's going to be fluctuation there. So you establish the accounts high and excess funds you can use for research and development or other costs that <clears throat> may be indirectly related to the hospital function. Um, but that way you can ensure. Now it's important to note with healthcare that you can't give it away for free because if you do, every time somebody gets a hangnail, they will go into the hospital and overload your system. So there needs to be a small copay. It needs to be a minimal copay. Um, if you're concerned about uh, severe illness or injury, um, the the under overlying underlying impact from from devastating illnesses, you can establish insurance accounts to cover those. Um, those can be done with non-recourse loans. It's a little bit complex, but um, the marriage of the corporate with the not-for-profit is going to be the only way that we're going to make a realistic difference and a realistic change. We cannot depend on governments. We cannot depend on existing corporations. And 
to a large extent, after 100 years, we've seen um, that despite non-governmental organizations and many charitable organizations, that nearly half the world's population lives in poverty. So those have obviously failed in their current setup. We need to set up something new. So my concept there is the establishment and the marriage of the corporation with the not-for-profit. And if we can get that started, we can move from there and see what happens next. Thank you. Um, like and subscribe, if you will. We'll try and have more content soon. Thank you.